It's black and white, heaven and hell, where the things we want are not for sale. Hiding in the shadows, hiding in the shadows. Howard, I want to uh, I want to thank you, and uh, and I guess we can uh, we can give this as a little PSA for uh, all of our diehard fans. Um, everybody, you need to go check out this movie that the the uh, the Howler uh, recommended to me called Fat Man, starring Mel Gibson. Um, this is a fantastic. Christmas movie is it, isn't that what we would say? How are it's, it's a Christmas movie? It's, it is. A, I mean, it's got Saint Nicholas in. It. I mean, Chris, uh, 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 Chris Kringle. Chris Kringle. I mean, does it get any more Chris Kringle? It's Chris got some Kringle. reindeer. It's got some elves. It's yeah. got. You know what I mean? I mean, it's got it all, right? It's got it all. That sounds some, pretty festive to me. Yeah, it is. It now, <laughs> now, now, I want to say. Um, you know, me and the Howler, we're 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 big into movies, and uh, we like to. We've write. been in some movies. Hey, we've been make in, sure we, we've been in some movies. We've been in some <laughs> movies. Um, we've done some writing for uh, for potential movies, and I got to tell you, these uh, the Nelms brothers who wrote and directed this movie. This is uh, the only thing I could compare this to is like the first time I saw Pulp Fiction. You know, you heard all the stuff about Pulp Fiction and how it took a genre and kind of put a big twist on it that you weren't expecting. Um, this this is what they did with this. Like, I've never seen a Christmas Santa Claus story done quite this way. So, so I will preface it, though. If you're looking for um, – the Santa Claus or Christmas Chronicles or even uh, Polar you know, Express. Polar it Express. It ain't Polar Express. <laughs> you know what I mean? Polar, uh, it, it ain't. It's a cold ride, but it ain't Polar <laughs> Express. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, let me get this straight here. So you're telling me that it's a Christmas movie and it's not for the kiddies. It's well, not I, hey, I offered to let my kids watch it. My wife, I, I, I watched the trailer. And if the trailer doesn't hook you, something's wrong with you. Okay, that's all I got to say. You know what I mean? You've yeah, got you've got an exactly. issue with the trailer. So the trailer hooked me, and then I got on. You know, I get defeated by the simplest remote controls sometimes because I'm just <laughs> that way. And I, you know, I got a giant TV and three different remotes, but I was able to get one to search it. Thank God it was the other day because I killed the TV a while ago and I can't get it to come back on. But anyhow. I I searched it and I had it and I told my wife she wanted to do this little movie night stuff. You know what I mean? Movie theater is shut down here because of COVID. Because I guess whatever. You know what I mean? They yeah. don't have movies to release. You know what I mean? So yeah. Right. I said, you know, she, you know, she wants to watch the made Handmaiden's Tale or whatever. And I said, well, I'm gonna, I think it's what we need to watch. And I said, it's a Santa Claus movie. And she said, can the kids watch it? And I said, well, sure, they can watch it. Why, why can't they watch it? <laughs> and I searched it up, and I got up there, and there's a picture of Mel Gibson. And and it, she says, seems rated R. And my kids are teenagers, so, I mean, early teens. It's not like, uh, I mean, they're public school kids. I mean, and, and exactly. You, you know what I mean? If you're a public <laughs> school kid today, and so she says, it's R. We can't watch that with the kids, honey. And my little kids immediately erupt and say, we hear less than that and worse than that in the, on the bus. And they say mf -er on the bus and they do this and they do that. And they do. <laughs> she says, well, we're not watching it. So anyhow, well, so I, I had to wait. And a day or two later, I had my 17 year old with me. And I said, we're going to watch this movie. And I got it up, and it was it was rent it for seven dollars or buy it. And um, it's crazy as it sounds when Amazon when I first got my first Amazon Prime years ago, I I faltered around, and I the only movie I ever bought up until this week was 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 Apocalypse Now. And I used to spend a lot of time in Europe and fr France, uh, to be exact, sometime in in the Netherlands, but most of the time in France, and all the TV stations are in French, obviously. 
So if I needed American, even they even dub French over American movies. But I used to watch Apocalypse Now 50 times. So I said, I'm buying it. And and my wife happened to walk through again and says, you're spending $14. I said, it's the best money you can buy. I'll own it forever. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, it was a ride. Isn't it, Shane? It's a ride. It, hey, Not and, here's, on. and here's the thing is, is that, for the kids, I think kids should watch it because there's a very special message. Because I don't understand why it was rated R. I think it was probably because of the violence, you know. And and I think I think with the best um, reviews of it was Christy. We got done. And she goes, you know, that was kind of like uh, the Godfather Christmas. <laughs> and I said, you're right. <laughs> you know, so- I, before I bought it, before I read it, I kind I watched the trailer probably twenty times. Okay. Wow. And, okay. Oh yeah, I probably watched it fifteen, twenty times. I'm showing some guys at work, and they, you know what I mean. And they, they, you know, tiny wastes around this world nowadays. Youngest, young generation. They're not even millennials. What are the new kids? Nineteen to twenty-five. What are they now? Nineteen. I don't even know what they're called. Exactly. You know. <laughs> and uh, the, the lost, the lost generation. Well, I don't even. They, they're not even smart enough to be lost. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, um. I lost my. I feel like the president now. I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> <you know. laughs> well, but, uh, needless, needless to say, oh, I read. I, I read some reviews from Honest God movie reviewers, right? Yeah. And and I don't know what movie they saw because they didn't see the movie I saw. Bingo. <laughs> you know, and that's and maybe it's because you know I've I've seen some crazy shit on Christmas, and. Uh, you know, we're about to talk about some crazy shit on Christmas. So maybe, you know, not everybody's Christmas is Polar Express, right? You know, in Polar Express, there's a little kid that runs out there and he doesn't know if he wants to get on a train and doesn't have a ticket and all that. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of people the freaking train don't even slow down for. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so everything can't be poly, uh, lollipops and, and, and icicles, can it? No, of course not. No, Christmas is hard for some people. Let uh-huh. me just tell you, just let me tell you that. So I mean, so listen, everybody that's a fan of uh, great movies, go go find this movie and rent it or buy it. Even better, or, hey, it's just a good old fashioned Mel Gibson dark comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and 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 yeah. that I think that is the you know it the writing is so smart in it Mm -hmm. that sometimes the below average viewer might not get it. You know what I mean? Because I am, I'm watching and I'm laughing. There's things that that, (laughs) there's things that are in that movie that are written for dudes that know what they are, you know? And I I reached out, you know, he's got a Walker coat, probably Dragoon or whatever. He, He, when Santa Claus, when Chris Kringle, there's there's a bad there's a scene in there when some bad stuff happens to him. I'm not going to give away money, but he has to do what most people in America do. They get that box out from underneath their bed and 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 exercise their Second Amendment right. And they he goes out there with not one gun but two. One of them is a Colt Dragoon uh, or Walker <laughs> Colt, and the other one's a 1911, good old fashioned 1911. So he's got one in each hand and he's taking care of business. And I, I tell you, it just it's just there's things in there that were written for people that know what they're looking at. That's right. And and I and and like you said, not to give anything away, but uh um and I don't know if these guys meant to do this, but uh the homage in my mind to the Christmas story and Ralphie, you'll shoot your eye out. I if that's not a direct yeah. <laughs> if that's not a direct um Link to that. I don't know. I, I, they could go, they could tell me it was, and I'd believe it a hundred times out of a hundred. So, so yeah, everybody take me in the howler's advice. I know Jace is going to go watch it this weekend. The judge has already watched it. Go watch this movie. You won't be disappointed. Maybe not do it at Christmas with everybody there, but you know, but- that's another reason why I bought it because I knew I was going to have people over for Christmas, the holidays, whatever. And you can't, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy that I make them sit down there and watch it with me. You know, I'm not the guy that's, oh, you need to go see this. Where, you know, 
you got to make them watch it right there with you. And, and, and especially, you know, some poor ass friends and relatives I got, they can't afford to go spend $14 on a movie. They'll buy a pack of cigarettes and a lottery ticket. But <laughs> since I got it, I can, I can make them watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and that's why another reason why I wanted to own it. Well, since we're talking about Christmas, we, you got any good Christmas, Christmas stories, Howard? Well, I'm trying to decide which ones aren't the most depressing. You know, years ago, I used to have to do this shop with a cop. I'm talking almost 30 years ago now. And back in them days, they would, uh, and I don't even know where they got the list, but the, the, the police department, the sheriff's department, the patrol, these people had put together this list of poor kids, right? And uh, I had to go down this town. Did I ever tell you all these Osage City stories yet? I don't know if I ever told you. Oh, well, we've heard stories. some of them. But okay. the flood and everything. Yeah, this was, yeah, these, this, these are flood survivors. I used to have to go down and get these kids. I had them two or three years in a row with shop of the cop and the three brothers, you know, they were, they started riding with me like six, seven and eight. The next year they were seven, eight, nine and eight, nine and 10. You know what I mean? And uh, anyway, I used to have to pick them up and, and man, they were the best. You just couldn't even believe how well behaved these kids are. I used to go down this, you'd take them to, at that time we'd go to the Ramada Inn and Santa Claus would come, Santa Claus would ride in a helicopter, say, please bring him in in a helicopter and he'd get out you know, big bell jet ranger in the parking lot. And they'd go in there and, and they had a Christmas list. The first couple of years, you'd have to bring them through Kmart. Everybody knows it's of our age knows what a Kmart used to be. Oh yeah. And, Ooh, like and special when, baby. And when you, I'm going to say this and it's going to sound worse than it. it well, what I'm going to say sounds bad, but what I'm describing was worse. Okay. When okay. you bring, uh, 75 to 150 underprivileged kids into a Kmart at once. I don't care how many cops you put there. It, <laughs> it gets out of hand quick. You know what I mean? They want to, I mean, they're down there, you know, they're supposed to be looking at Godzilla and they're down there with the enamel cookware and stuff. You just don't even know what they want. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't even want. So by the third year, they had to submit a list and and Santa Claus would land in this parking lot and then he would call them all in and you'd you'd go into Ramada Inn and they would be it would be like little Danny's Tonka truck was sitting there with him. You know, the, the you know, oh, they yeah. would so they started having like personal shoppers. You know, if you're in the the uh, Bergdorf Goodmans that have a personal shopper, these had a personal toy shopper and um but anyway, there was a female cop one day. She says, how do you get those kids to act so well? And I didn't have a hard time. That's because they get the shit beat out of them at home. You know, that's the reason why they listen. Oh, it ain't got nothing to do with me. I guess I shouldn't have said that, you know. <laughs> but, uh, hey, I would just That's why story I mean. was, that's why I behave so well. Oh. The snow story I was going to tell you the other day was, um, and I don't even know, and I don't even got my puppy come down here. Uh, and I, we were working at Christmas, and there was a skiff of snow, not real bad, but just you know that them some of them wet slushy snows, three or four inches, right? Oh yeah, and uh, it covered the highway. And I went from wreck to wreck to wreck. And when I tell you wreck to wreck to wreck, Interstate 70 can be an absolute nightmare. I wasn't assigned to 70. I was just off of it. But there were so many wrecks on 70. I had went down to help these other troopers. Finally, they called me to a wreck in my zone. It's a U.S. highway. Uh, it's a major U.S. highway, but it's two lane, you know, 10, 11 feet in each direction with a big 10 or 11 foot gravel shoulder. Farm country on both sides. Uh, picked, you know, grain fields, corn or beans on both sides of the highway. And the, and the, it looks flat and straight. And it is, but every once in a while there's a turn or a hill. And that's what jacks people up, if that makes sense. So there was a guy with a, with a, um, an 18 wheeler double pulling double trailers. So he had, you know, he was a, he was a, single cab tractor with like a 48 foot box or probably 36 foot box and another 36 foot box. And he was trying to get home from Christmas. 
they had a snow deal where the roads were, they don't really close them here where I'm at, but, but, uh, he had gotten up in the morning, had about this three inches of snow and he was going to try to make it home for the holiday. Right. And he did make it home. So if you're, if you're worried about his untimely demise, well, he, <laughs> he made it. Well, you made it home alive. For yeah. Okay. Now, the tr- okay. now the truck and contents didn't make it, but he did. But what he had done was there's a little swag in the road in a little bend and, and he slides across the way to the trailer, pushes the tractor. You know, he's trying to keep it on the road and the whole weight shifts or, you know, it just keeps pushing straight and it pushes him across the center line into the path of an oncoming, uh, four wheel drive Dodge Dakota. And, with a dude whose driver's license said 360 pounds on it. Now I'm going to tell you right now, my driver's license is about 40 pounds off of me, right? Because people mm-hmm. lie on their driver's license. So when it says 360 on a driver's license, he's probably a Snickers bar away from four and a quarter <laughs> in, a, in, in a reg, in a regular cab, Dodge Dakota. How? And, How? I don't know, but I'm telling you. So, so, it hit this Dodge Dakota and then it continued off the road and hit a power line pole and knocked the power lines of the powers going across the highway. We're completely closed down. We're, we are absolutely completely closed down. I'm on now, I'm on one side of the highway. One, you know, I'm on the north side of this wreck. There's some deputies on the south side of the wreck because we can't do nothing. Somehow they were able to get the fat guy out of the truck and i don't remember because when you have like because the power wasn't on the ground maybe that's what it was it wasn't all the way touching but anyway you know when you hit live power for people who don't know if there's power line down stay in your car because you won't get shot because of your tires insulate it but if you step out and touch the ground the ground's hot you could zap yourself which I'm sure you guys probably knew, but that's for the yeah. audience. Yeah. You're ever in a car and you get a power line, you stay in a car. So anyhow, I was just sitting there, I don't know, a couple hours. And my sergeant was training a new guy, a, a, a guy who on paper looked like a rock star. You know what I mean? He had that resume that somebody like me can only dream of. He was, he was an Apache pilot. I mean, an army Apache pilot. That's how sharp he was, right? Yeah, it's great. Dis- I mean, this dude was highly, I mean, I think I've said it in some of my podcasts before. I wasn't that highly rated. I was just a dude that came to work. You know, I was, they need a body to fill a uniform and I was that dude. But this guy was a, a shooting star if he could only get off of FTO. So my sergeant came to the other side of this accident and relieved these two deputies. I see him get out of his car and he walks way around in the snow. And gets in, sits in my car. He goes, Oh my God, man, what's going on? And I said, Well, I don't know. What do you tell me? You know, and we just got to have some small talk, have some small talk. And after we're sitting there, I don't know, not very long, 10 or 15 minutes, there's a two bucket trucks come, but they're on the other side of the accident, right? They pull up. Now they're supposed to be there, set the pole, the turn the power off, whatever that they got to do, you know, the co op. And uh, they start to get out. The trooper, my, my, I'm going to use the term roommate because I lived with him. My roommate goes and talks to him a little bit. They get back in the truck. My sergeant's over there going, dude, what's taking him so long? He start, starts to rail on because they're all union guys. He's going in freaking union guys. You know what I mean? How come they're not out here fixing this? So after, I don't know, another 10 or 15 minutes. Now we sit there and watching this bucket truck for 30 minutes. My sergeant's got to get out and walk all the way around the snow. Walks up to the first guy in the bucket truck. Says, hey, what's the deal with the power line? Oh, that trooper right there told us we had to sit in the truck. And he goes, huh? He told us everybody had to stay in their vehicles, and we couldn't approach the accident scene. So my sergeant went over there and said, hey, man, what's the deal? You tell them they had to stay in the truck? Yep. You told me to tell make everybody stay in their car, Sarge. So I'm making everybody stay in their car. <laughs> He said, dude, don't you think that's, don't you think that's, 
that's, they're they're here to help. And and my partner says, hey, I'm following orders. You told me to keep them in the car, so I'm keeping them in the car. I'm just doing what you told me. So so sometimes I told you I guys I was in like a Twitter troll thing tonight with some guys that were idiots and and what they were saying and and I could understand why people would think some of the things they think is because <laughs> there's people out there that 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 make I don't want to say do dumb things just 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 there's just weird people in this world right and uh some of them work in positions of power or authority <laughs> but I, I, but I, I, <laughs> well, I think I think you I think you best described him earlier to us as he's the kind of guy you want in the in the cockpit flying the Apache helicopter, but not necessarily the guy. Well, the I don't even know about that. I mean, I can tell the whole. I can tell, and I, and I hate to say this because he's a great dude in a lot of. I mean, he as a human being, he is a he is just a great human being. Does that make sense? But he had, he would have these binders because he had to fly once a weekend for drill weekend. When it was coming up to drill weekend, he would have these binders and he would he would he would read all these checklists. I mean, those guys have to know so much stuff. It's a wonder they crash sometimes because you can't remember what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? You, you I don't even know how to explain it. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, how do you sit there and read? 385 pages. You know, I don't know. And, and, and remember what's on page 385 that, oh, if this goes out, this, I'm supposed to do this. And if that goes out, I'm supposed to do that. And, and this and that and that and this and this and that. And, and it's like, I watched Top Gun and Maverick didn't even have a freaking checklist. I never said him do a checklist one. Did you? And that was that 14. No. <laughs> but that's television for you. I well, I don't. Anyhow, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, uh, yeah. Oh boy. Anyhow, well, well, you know, hey, I guess it takes all kinds, and and that story just kind of fits with uh, with how we started the episode of a little twist, little twist on the, on the Santa Claus story. Uh, it's a little twist on uh, who we got out there patrolling the roads and. Uh, you know yeah, and, and and well, you know what? I was sitting here thinking of position of power. It made me think, and this dovetails back to that movie. You know, if somebody put a hit on Santa Claus, let's say, let's face it, that's what it's about. As dumb as that sounds to most human beings, somebody might take the contract, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So you never know. If somebody gonna put a hit on Santa Claus. You just better hope Santa Claus ain't Mel Gibson because he didn't get that job for being, uh, what do you say, fat and jolly? Is that what he said? Fat. I didn't, didn't get, get the job for being yeah, fat yeah. and jolly. <laughs> and hey, guess what? I didn't get this job for being fat and jolly either, right? So there. Well, I did. So, <laughs> well, gentlemen, I, did, so I am definitely me. going to listen. I'm going to watch that episode <laughs> this week. Watch that movie, yeah. Yeah, watch yeah. that movie, yes. <laughs> So we encourage, hey, we encourage all our listeners to go out and check it out. And uh, you know what? If you like it, go give it a uh, five star review or ten ten review or whatever whatever the rating is. Because help those guys out. Because uh, you know it's an excellent movie. Let us know what. Hey, hey they what, worked. I took them ten twelve years to make it. That's right. So you know? let. Uh, I am let, going to be very know. curious about what the, our listening audience would think about this movie. So anybody that has seen this movie, come to our discussion group on After the Shadows on Facebook. And if you're not already a member of After the Shadows, go ahead and uh, become a member. We'll get you approved because I want to hear what you got to say about exactly. this uh, that, yeah. about this movie because I am I'm really intrigued about this and. And uh, we have a great audience here, and I just really want to hear what they got to think about it, too. Hey, and if you, if you don't like it, this is a gift to the audience. If you don't like it, I want you to watch it again and then decide. Sometimes, you know, it's written so well, so you might have to watch it a second time to catch all the stuff. Hey, and it's just like this episode. You might uh, you might have to listen to it twice just to catch all the stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on that note, we'll sign off for 
for this week and uh, eagerly await the rest the, uh, the rest of the movie reviews for the movie Fat Man. <laughs> yes, audience, join After the Shadows if you're not already a member and tell us about what you think about this movie. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs>